You've determined that the cause of your customer's drivability concern is a fuel delivery issue, but before you replace that fuel pump, are you sure that that's the real cause of the problem? I'll explain in today's Service Done Right. Today's edition of Service Done Right is brought to you by Carter. Learn more at www.carterengineered.com. If the fuel pump is not getting a clean power supply and has a clean return path to ground, well, the fuel pump can't work properly. So before you replace the pump, let's verify the integrity of the fuel pump circuit. As with any electrical concern, start by reviewing the wiring diagram so you understand what is supposed to happen in the circuit. One of the first tests that I like to do is to look at the current in the fuel pump circuit. Uh, that's what Ohm's law teaches us, right? If the current flow is correct, then the circuit should be uh, healthy. Now we do have to keep in mind this is a motor and anytime there's a load placed on the motor, that's also going to affect its current draw. And it gives us an indication just how hard, in this case, the fuel pump is really working. A uh, couple of ways I can tap into this circuit. I'm going to select the power fuse here, fuse 16, under the underhood junction block. It's on this uh, 2004 Mercury Sable. Uh, it is the 3 liter 24 valve engine. And then I'm going to insert a fuse buddy, which is essentially a pre made fused jumper wire. And, the, and you, I like these because you know these ends are not going to do any damage to the uh, fuse, uh, fuse box. And we want to avoid that. I see too many times where guys force something too big in there or, you know, and, and damage the connection, or it's too loose and you're not getting a good and accurate reading. And the next thing I'm going to do is grab my low amp clamp. We'll place that around the loop. And I'm going to set it to the 20 amp scale, which means that this tool is going to output a voltage signal. Any probe that you connect to your scope or your multimeter, it sends out a, a voltage signal, nothing else. So this is actually a conversion necessary. It's for every 100 millivolts that this is sending to my tool, that's going to be the equivalent of one amp. All right, so I have that on, battery's good. We'll go ahead and, and zero it. And the next thing I'm going to use, in this case, uh, I'm going to use uh, this little pocket scope. It's called the U-scope. And uh, I like using a scope to check current because you can learn additional things about the circuit uh, more than you can with just a voltmeter. Of course, you can do this with your, your DVOM using the, the amp function. Uh, just be careful that you don't overseed the current uh, flow of your tool, of course. But I can also look in the case of the fuel pump, I can get a good idea of the condition electrically of the fuel pump motor. I can see uh, what kind of wear is going on between the brushes and the commutator uh, using this and, and I can get some other information from it as well. So we're going to go ahead and plug that in and we'll turn it on. And let's see, so starting at the bottom I'm going to set the voltage scales kind of low because it is going to be a small amperage. So we'll set that at, eh, let's say 0.2, we'll start with that. Uh, time base, I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, trigger is going to be a, a positive trigger. And I'm going to select single because I just want to fill the screen and let it stop. Uh, in terms of the level, I don't need much. So we'll bring that down. Uh, rising slope is indicated. I'm not going to invert it. And everything else is all good to go there. So we should be good to go here on the scope. Now, activating the fuel pump. Uh, in some cases, you can jump the relay. You can um, do that to, to power up the pump, but this is actually controlled by a fuel pump control module like we saw in the wiring diagram. So I'm gonna use the scan tool to turn it on. So we'll go in here to the control units, take the PCM, and then we're gonna come under active tests. And let's see, we're gonna use the fuel pump on and off. All right, so what I'm really interested in here is it's 75% duty cycles what this test is going to run at. Now, I can probably increase it. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Uh, if you can, it's best to run it at 100% to really get a good current reading. But I'm just trying to get some baseline information here. I know what the pressure is going to be. Uh, so we can go ahead and turn it on and get our capture. 
All right, that took, that took no time. So you can see we got a capture there. Uh, let's take a few minutes to look at this a little more closely. Now, one of the things I like about using the scope is I can get a lot more information than just current flow, you know, what the amperage is. Uh, but we'll go ahead and check that first. I'm going to bring the cursor up close to the peaks there to get an idea. And then you can see it's 721 millivolts is the reading. Now, applying that 100 millivolts equals one amp conversion that we have to with the amp clamp, that gives us 7.2 amps. Uh, if you remember, the fuel rail pressure said 72 uh, PSI. Th this is not true across the board, so don't hold me to this, but if you're trying to get an idea of generally kind of a ballpark where you think that current should be, for every 10 PSI, one amp. And you can see in this case, that's pretty much right where it, where it is. Uh, so if, if that's the case, uh, then current flow through the circuit seems to be where it should be, so I don't suspect there's any issues there. But I do want to take a closer look at the pump. Again, if I'm considering replacing the pump, is it the pump? And if it's electrically uh, damaged, then there must be something that I can see in that pattern to let me know that. And there is. All these little squiggles that you see, let me see if I can open them up a little bit, and we'll do that by changing the adjustments on the screen. Uh, there's a little bit. Uh, my, there's a little bit more. And I'm going to move the cursor out of the way so you can get a better look at it. Now there's some other things I could do here if I really want to dive into this deep, but I'm looking here at the, at the squiggles and how clean they are and how uniform they are. If there's a lot of wear in that fuel pump, you're gonna see that pattern looking very choppy, flat spotted, uh, and you'll just be able to tell the difference. It's not gonna be nice, clean, and uniform like you see on this one here. So this electrically, I'm pretty sure that this pump is okay. Another thing I can take into account is the, if the current flow is around where it should be, then fuel flow should be okay, at least up to the fuel rail. And what I mean by that is if the resistance were extremely, or the current flow was extremely high, uh, yes, I could have an electrical issue or I could have a restriction of flow. Now this old Sable still uses uh, a serviceable fuel filter and you know how commonly those are overlooked. So if the fuel filter has not been serviced and it's restricted, then it could be just a matter of the fuel filter causing the problem. Uh, if the current was extremely low, well in that case, maybe it's not starting or, or running properly because there's not enough fuel in the tank. That could be one or that the pickups going to the fuel pump module are, are blocked and dirty and, and there's really nothing wrong with the pump. So I may have to take a look at that. Just a few, just a few ideas that you can use using this method. Now, if I did determine that there was a, uh, or suspect that there's a problem with the electrical health of the circuit, then the next step is to perform a voltage drop. And in order to do that test, I need to get as close to the component as I can. In this case, it's an in-tank pump, of course. And the closest I'm going to get without dropping the tank is right here at the harness connectors. I need to keep that in mind when I'm performing this test. Okay, there I mentioned here, there's a serviceable fuel filter. It looks like this has been changed recently. But using the schematic, we can identify the wires we need. In this case, uh, the black and pink and the, and the white, these are the uh, power and ground to the pump. Uh, the other wires here in the connector are for the uh, fuel sending unit. So let's see if we can get onto those. Now, I'm going to start with the white one. Uh, I'm using a power probe for this test. The uh, reason I like the power probe for something like this is that I can always reference the battery. I got a nice long lead on it. So we're going to go ahead and I'm using a back probe so I don't damage anything here. I'm going to stick that in. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit the plus button. So you can see if you can see that. Uh, get that in there. Plus button. There you go. Okay, this is that's showing me um, the voltage in the battery, and and I'm I'm going to use that as a comparison. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and activate the pump. You can hear it running. I'm going to check it real quick, and I've got 10.7 on my meter. All right. Remember that number, 10.7. We check the ba battery voltage open, 11.7. We'll do that one more time. On. 10.7. So there's a one volt voltage drop here in the circuit. 
don't want to negate the ground. So we'll go over here to the ground side as well, using the back probe. Again, I, I can't, I'm obviously I can't open the connector if I'm gonna do a voltage drop, right? That's gotta be done with the circuit operating. So we'll go ahead and place that in there again, turn it on. And we've got maybe 0.6 reading there. So that's the ground side of the circuit. Let's talk about some of those numbers and see if we can understand them. Now let's talk just a moment about what you just saw. When I measured the voltage of the fuel pump running at the connector under the vehicle, I only measured 10.7 volts on the power side of the circuit, as compared to the 11.7 volts I have in the battery. Yeah, I know, the 11.7 volts in the battery is a bad thing. I'll need to address that separately, but right now I'm concerned about that one volt difference. That could indicate a source of excess resistance somewhere in the circuit. And if there is, that's robbing voltage that the fuel pump needs in order to do its job. So how am I gonna test this accurately? Make sure I have a problem? Well, the first and foremost is do your homework first, as we did by reading the schematic and reading up on how this system operates. And we discovered that this uses a fuel pump control module that varies the fuel pump speed to meet load and demand. Well, that 10.7 volts in that case could be exactly what it's supposed to be. Here's how I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna to have to take one more test. I'll have to access the fuel pump control module in the rear of the vehicle, and I have to place one of my meter leads right there at the pin where that power feed to the pump leaves the module. And I'm gonna place my other meter lead right back where you saw it originally, underneath the vehicle. And I'm gonna turn the fuel pump, uh, fuel pump back on again. Now, if I see excessive voltage, I know it's in the circuit. And if I don't, less than a few tenths, then I know that everything's just the way it's supposed to be. One other thing I wanna uh, make sure you're aware of, we didn't check the entire path, did we? I still have that section of wiring from the connector to the pump and back again that could be a source of my problem. So if I still have what I consider a high resistance issue, I just may well have to drop the tank to access that connector directly. In any case, making sure that the electrical circuit is intact is an integral part of any fuel pump diagnosis and certainly fuel pump replacement. Replacing a fuel pump while there are issues in the circuit isn't going to help the customer or you any bit, but doing it the way I just showed you, that now is a service done right. Thanks for watching.